Hi my honeys, Erica here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I have an amazing video planned for you and it's probably my most requested DIY video ever. You guys always ask me how to make these beautiful chunky knit chenille blankets and I'm finally sharing the full process with you guys. I used to actually sell these in my Etsy shop but I decided this would be a great skill to share with you guys so you can make these for friends and family members this holiday season or make them for your own home. And I've included the same concept a chunky knit wreath in this video as well so you could make both pieces if you want make sure to subscribe to my channel keep on watching this video if you want to see the tutorial like the video give it a big old thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you want to see more DIY videos like this one happy holidays and thanks for watching To start out with this blanket, you want to take the end of the yarn and you want to take the long side that's attached to the ball and cross it over the short end there and then pull that line that's attached to the ball of yarn through that loop with your fingers and make a knot. You want it to be a small knot so I actually pull it through a little bit to make sure it's nice and small only where you can barely fit your fingers through it then what you're gonna do is you're gonna move your ball of yarn to the other side and you're gonna position your end knot there with the short end facing you and then you're gonna start pulling from the long piece of yarn that's attached to the ball little loops inside of each loop so you start with one loop and then you pull a new loop through every time. You don't want them to be big loops because you don't want your blanket to be loose on the bottom. We're creating the end of your blanket right now. So pull another loop through. You want to do this and you want to count as you do this. You want to have a total of 22 to 23 loops. I found that 25 loops makes too wide of a blanket and 20 loops makes too narrow of a blanket. We will be using a total of eight skeins of yarn for this blanket. You can do less to make a smaller blanket, but this is a decent size, hefty blanket. I call it man size. You could put it anywhere. So just keep pulling those loops through until you reach 23 loops total. Make sure you're counting. Making sure that your loops are all about equal size. If they're different in size, you will notice it at the edge of your blanket. So just make sure you're pulling really small loops through until you get to 22 or 23 loops. I did 23 on this one. Okay, now that we have our 23 loops, we're gonna stretch out the loops so we can see exactly each individual one. Then you're gonna take your extra yarn and you're going to start pulling loops through each one but first take your yarn and spread it across so you have excess to be able to do this so reach your two fingers in and pull a loop through same size as your other loops reach your fingers in each loop and create a new loop that is really the whole concept of creating this blanket is just pulling through loops it may take you a little effort to stretch out in between each one to grab your new loop, but you'll be able to see clearly that you have 23 loops and each one needs a new loop pulled through it. Repeat this process until you've gone all the way across your entire set of 23 loops and just pull slack when you need it. You're gonna use your thumb and pointer finger, if I didn't mention that before. It's the easiest way to pull these through. I'm almost to the end now, finishing that first line of loops. And believe it or not, once you're doing that, you're gonna go back across the same way you came, pulling new loops through 
each of the new loops you created. I like to move my skein back and forth because then I get slack much easier, but you could keep it in the same spot. You'll just have to keep pulling slack from wherever you have the ball of yarn. Ball of yarn, skein, it's the same thing. So I'm reaching through with my pointer finger and my thumb again, pulling slack when I need it, and creating new loops inside of every single loop that we've created. There should be 23 across, and you're gonna go back and forth and do this back and forth, back and forth until you reach the end of your blanket. But I do have a special little trick I'm gonna show you guys, and that is how to change color midway through the blanket. So I will show you that here in a second after I've created more rows using, I think I'm gonna do three full skeins of the white first, and then I will transfer over to the pink and I'll show you how to do that. So let me speed this up real quick to get to the next spot. Okay, now that I've finished three full skeins of yarn, this is what it looks like when you pull the loops through for three full skeins of yarn. Now I wanna show you how to switch colors while making this blanket. You can do stripes, you can do half and half. In this blanket, I'm gonna do a larger section of pink in the middle of it, actually two skeins worth of pink yarn. And then there's three on the bottom and three on the top. So it's gonna kinda of be like a middle color block stripe. So what you wanna do is cut off the end, pretty close to the end of the loop there of your white yarn, and then tie on your pink yarn. This is what you'll do every single time that you need to start a new skein, even if you're just doing the white. Tie on a new line, and then you can either trim it now to cut off those little nubbins, but I like to trim mine later. So you pull a pink one through, and make sure you do it at the very end of one of the sides of your blanket. That will get you a new color onto your blanket, and I'll show you here. As we start to pull pink loops through, you'll start to see that it starts the new color of your blanket, giving you the option to do all kinds of fun colors with your blankets. If you want to change your colors often throughout a blanket, all you need to do is go to the end of the line, either side really, and make a cut and tie on your new color. I try to not tie on too many colors because those little nubbins, yeah, you can trim them off, but you don't wanna to have too many of those in your blanket because you will kind of see them. But to be honest though, if you cut it really well and hide it really well with inside the blanket, it shouldn't be much of a noticeable thing. So I'm creating my first row of pink. and I'm dragging some slack over, and all you're doing is looping through, looping through. Can you guys believe how easy it is to make this blanket? It is time consuming. I mean, I think a blanket like this took me about two and a half, three hours to do, and I'm very experienced at it, so your first one might take you some time, but I promise it's worth it, because you get this beautiful blanket you can keep in your home or gift to someone else. I'm moving my yarn over so that way I have some slack. And starting my second row of pink here. And I'll just continue that all the way down. I'm gonna do two full skeins of the pink. And I'll come back to you, we'll speed this up, and I'll come back to you when I have all of my pink done and I'm switching back to white. So now that I finished both skeins of pink, I am going to, that was just a little excess pink. I knew I wouldn't make it all the way back across. So I'm gonna switch back to white again. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. This time it's on the other side. It doesn't matter which side. I've cut very close to the loop and I'm now gonna tie on the white again. And like I said, you can either trim the extra little nubbins off at that time, or you can wait until your blanket's done and do trimming of all the little ends at the very end. But let me show you, you just wanna clip it close to where your knot is, but not exactly, because you don't want it to ever unravel. So let's 
Go back to white and finish off this blanket with three more skeins of white for eight total skeins of yarn for this entire blanket. This is gonna make a beautiful blanket that's large on your sofa, it could be thrown on your bed and it's quite large. And to be honest, you can make these blankets in any sizes that you want. It's just up to you what size you're looking for to fit your home. I've made smaller baby blankets out of these. I've made a queen size blanket before. You just have to kind of experiment with how many loops you need to do and how many skeins of yarn you need to create the size blanket you're looking for. So I'm finishing my first row of white again and I will finish up this blanket with three more skeins of white. All right, you guys, now that I have finished the blanket, it's time to tie off the very end. This is a little bit different than we've done from the beginning to the middle. This is something different. So you wanna take the rest of your yarn, you wanna make sure you have enough for two lengths to pull through. And then what you're gonna do is pull through a second loop from your first one, like you're doing a normal row, but then put the other loop inside the other one. Then go to the next loop pull a loop through, then pull it through the first one. You wanna make this somewhat loose. I don't wanna, I hesitate to say loose, but definitely looser than a regular knot because otherwise you'll pull the blanket really tight at the end. It'll look really small compared to the front of the blanket. So pull a loop through, pull some of the skein through, and then pull it through the original loop. And keep doing this all the way across your blanket. So pull a loop through your next one, and then pull that loop through the loop in your left hand. Keep doing that all the way across the end of the blanket until all 23 of your loops are through each other. Pull a loop through, then pull it through the original loop to the left of it. You can do this from the right side as well, but this is just where I ended up with my skein. You would obviously just make it reverse. Keep pulling through, pull a loop, then pull it through the original loop. And then I'll show you how to tie it off at the end of this. Okay, now that I've gotten to my final loop, I put that last one through the remaining loop. I have one loop left. What I'm gonna do is take my scissors, cut off the end, and I'm going to make a knot in that last loop, pull it through, and make it tight. I like to do this a couple of times on the end here to get a very secure ending to my blanket. So just pull it through another loop on the edge there and pull it tight. Not too tight because it is, it is yarn, it can break off, but tight enough to where it's secure. Do that a couple of times to secure your blanket and then trim it off at the end and you have finished your chunky blanket. That's what it should look like at the end. Okay, to finish off your blanket, you just wanna cut off any extra ends. There was the end from the start of our blanket, and then you'll see little nubbins in here. You can cut them as you go. When you tie on a new skein, you end up with little pieces like this. You can cut them off while you're making the blanket, but I usually like to just cut them all off at the end, make it easy on myself. So just trim them all off and your blanket's good to go. For this next project, you'll need some type of wreath hoop. I'm using this one from Michael Stores. It can be a wood one, it can be a metal one, and one skein of yarn and a pair of scissors. That is all you're gonna need for this project. And we're gonna apply the same principles that we used in our blanket making video, but instead, we are gonna make a chunky knit wreath. These are so stinking cute and would make a great gift for anyone or look great on your front door. So we're gonna do the same concept of making our first initial knot. And we are going to 
make it nice and small and tight, and then we are going to switch our skein around and start making loops. This time though, you only need about four or five loops. So just pull four or five. I pulled five, to be honest with you, I could have gotten away with four. So either one will work. Four is probably the more ideal. But my wreath still turned out amazing. So pull four loops together like so. And then you're gonna start making your rows. So instead of building our blanket wide, we're building a very long, skinny blanket. So pull your loops through your original ones. So you'll have five loops because I did five initial loops. And then you keep going back and forth, back and forth. Let me pull the third row through. Just make sure you have enough slack every time. And you're basically gonna keep going until you have a long enough length to cover the entire circumference of your wreath. My wreath is about 18 inch circumference. So I'm going to have to make a long enough piece to go all the way around that. And all you have to do is just make sure it stretches to around that. It doesn't have to be overlapping or loose. You want it to be kind of tight around the wreath. So let me speed it up a little bit here. And what you'll do is you'll just check with your wreath every single time and you'll see me checking to see if it's long enough yet. So let's show you how that works. Okay, so I'm checking the wreath right now to see if it's long enough. Basically, that's gonna fold over each side, but is it long enough? Nope, not quite yet, so let me keep making a bunch of rows. I have about halfway done. Okay, I'm going to check my length one more time to see if I have enough to go all the way around my wreath. And as I pull it up here, I'm going to see that I do have enough, so I don't have to make any more loops to create any more length. And I'm gonna take the end where I started my blanket, that little loose end there, and I'm gonna tie it to the other side of the blanket to essentially bring the two of them together. So I'm putting that through and I'm tying it off to make sure that those two stay together. I'm leaving that alone for right now. And I'm gonna take the other side and I'm going to loop it through, tie it on. So you see I kinda have one side looped through and then the other side looped through. You just basically wanna connect them in the middle, tie them in a nice little knot to keep those two sides together. And tie it off. And then you can see here, I'm gonna cut these little ends off, but you can see that I still have to obviously connect all the ends around because right now all that's connected is the top. I still have all those open pieces. So what you wanna do is take the remaining of your skein. You may need a second skein. So just get two skeins just in case you use too much. But I swear if you just use four loops instead of five in the beginning, like I did five instead of four, I'm sure you would have enough but I'm going to take the excess from my skein and a little bit of an additional skein, and I'm going to start weaving it through on opposite sides in order to tie the wreath all the way together. Okay, so I start at the top here. I'm weaving it through one side, then weaving it through the bottom and pulling it through. Weaving it through one loop and pulling it through. There's no exact science to this. You just wanna make sure, it's almost like sewing, you know? You kinda of are going in a crisscross pattern in order to tie these two ends together. You just don't want them to be open and pull through some extra slack if you need it. We're just closing off this wreath. It's a basic crossover every single time. Just work your way left to right, left to right until you've gone all the way around the wreath. It really is like tying shoestrings. You just wanna go back and forth, back and forth, all the way around the wreath.
Okay, you can see I ran out on that side, so I just am going to tie this off. Pull it through a couple more loops, and then I'm going to tie it off into a knot, and that will just disappear inside the wreath. There's me pulling it through and tying a knot. And then I'm just going to trim that little piece off after I tie it off a couple times. I think I did it twice just because I wanted to make sure it for sure stayed. Now I'm gonna take the other end that is attached to the skein. There's me just trimming it off. I'm gonna take the other end that's attached to the skein and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of length. I won't need all of it, but I'm gonna cut a section off so that I can finish sewing up the rest of the wreath. And here I am doing the same thing just from the other side, attaching one side to the other in a crisscross pattern until I reach that area that I just tied off. Okay, now I'm tying off the final end. I ended up having a lot more extra than I thought, but that's fine. And I'm trimming it off, and that is our finished wreath. The only thing I wanna add at this point is I think a little yarn bow at the end of it. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I think I am going to make a little extra yarn bow at the bottom. So I'm just gonna take an extra spare piece I have, put it through two loops that actually looked kinda loose anyway, and make a cute little bow on the bottom of the wreath. If you wanted to, you could use regular ribbon. You could use a different color for the bow as well. But I'm just gonna keep my, my wreath all pink. And that is the finished wreath. Now, if you did want to add a little extra piece of yarn on the back to hang it from, I didn't mind that I don't have a hanger on it because I have a hook and it's just gonna hang right on that. And let me show you the final piece.